Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. On Wakefield Street resides the Gaffney Home. It is one of the most historic and beautiful Victorian mansions in Rochester. The mansion and accompanying stable is named for Charles Benjamin Gaffney. He was a brave soldier in the Civil War, a lawyer, a judge, and a loving husband. Charles Gaffney was the son of John and Sarah Gaffney. He was born in Ossipi on September 17, 1843. By the time he was four years old, both his mother and father had passed away. He was raised by his aunt for a time, and from the age of 11 to 14, lived at the Wakefield home of Jacob Bollard. In 1862, he enlisted in the Union Army to fight in the American Civil War. Even though he was only 17 years old, he joined the 13th New Hampshire Infantry under the command of William Grantman. Charles was mustered into the army as a second lieutenant. He was well thought of by his superior officers and was promoted to first lieutenant on June 1, 1863. He fought in the battles of Fredericksburg, Drury's Bluff, Cold Harbor, and in many smaller engagements. He avoided serious wounds in all of these battles. However, his luck in battle did not last. In June 1864, he was wounded at the Battle of Petersburg by a mini ball which struck him in his thigh. The wounded men of the 13th Regiment, which included Gaffney, were taken back to the house of Mr. Thomas Rushmore near the Appomattox River, a little over a mile northward from the battlefield. Thomas Rushmore's entire house was turned into a hospital. An old piano found in the house had its legs sawed off and was used as an operating table for the surgeons. After having their wounds dressed, the wounded men spent the night in Mr. Rushmore's house. However, so serious was the wound in Gaffney's thigh that the bullet could not be extracted. He had to carry the bullet in his leg. Charles Gaffney left the Rushmore house, recuperated in a hospital near Point of Rocks, Virginia. He returned home to New Hampshire on July 22, 1864, and when his wound had partially healed, he returned to war. He was an aide to Generals Ralston and McCollum of the 1st Division, and to General Ripley of the 1st Brigade. In May 1865, he was promoted to captain for gallant conduct and was mustered out of the army at the end of the war. Charles carried the bullet in his leg until November of 1881 when it was extracted by Dr. Horatio N. Small, who was a very talented doctor from Portland, Maine. After the war, Charles studied law and graduated in 1868 from the law school at Columbia College. In Washington, D.C., he worked as a clerk in the Treasury Department, as well as a clerk for the Senate Committee on Naval Affairs. In 1871, he left Washington and moved to Rochester. Charles formed a law partnership with Joseph H. Worcester. The firm was known as Worcester, Gaffney, and Snow. In 1890, he worked for Frank Jones, the president of the Boston Maine Railroad, and spent most of his time in Boston. In 1893, Charles returned to Rochester and once again worked as a lawyer. Three years later, in 1896, he was appointed judge of probate for Stratford County. He was married twice. His first wife was Mary Ellen Grant from Ossipi. She passed away in 1888. Mary Ellen was an invalid and suffered vast health problems for many years prior to her death. Charles Gaffney's second wife was Ida A. Peavy of Farmington. She too, for the last few years, suffered from ill health. At the time of his appointment as judge in 1896, Charles Gaffney's health started to fail him. It was at this time he started construction of the elegant mansion that we know as the Gaffney House. Unfortunately, Charles and his wife did not have much time to enjoy their new house. It is said that the hard work he put in as a judge and the sickness of his wife, to whom he was very much devoted to, hastened the end. Within eight days of his death, and on the last day he was able to sit up against the advice of his doctor, he held his regular term of court. Charles died in January 1898. His wife, Ida, died shortly after. Charles Gaffney's mansion, according to his will, was left in the hands of trustees for public use. The magnificent mansion was transformed into a house for the elderly in 1904. The house is still used today as a home for the elderly. Charles Gaffney's good friend Leslie Snow 
sent the following of Gaffney. He did many acts of charity in his lifetime, and left the residue of his estate for the benefit of the people of his native county. No one had a better friend than Charles B. Gaffney. He was especially kind and considerate to the younger members of the legal profession. He seemed to welcome an opportunity to administer good, wholesome advice. And this ends the broadcast. If any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com and come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.